He's arrived. Well, both of them. Both bits have arrived. Welcome back again, guys. Another episode, final episode of this part, anyway. Um, so, yeah, the uh, AN6 elbow, the fast flow elbow from Torx has arrived, so that can go back onto the coolant, and the oil breather pipe's arrived, uh, the bit that goes into the killer B bit. So, that means we can fire up today. All being well, we're going to crank it over, get some oil pressure, put this in, and we're all good to go. We've got another addition that's turned up. My, this is my friend's car. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you you might follow him as well. Uh, he's it's very similar spec wise to what my car was last season. Uh, more or less the same weight. I think it's just under twelve hundred kilos. Carbon roof. Fiberglass doors. It's got an EGA 22 in it, uh, 2.35 um, engine wise. Not sure of the turbo, I've never actually asked him, but he, he was running around the 550, 540, 550 horsepower mark. Um, yeah, the mint car to be fair. He's got the WRC front end, but we'll talk about that maybe another day. Um, for now, We'll get onto this. I've got two things to do before I start. As I said, oil pressure prime, do you know, make sure we've got oil pressure. We've got the Accusum pin and I've pre-charged that. So that's got um, oil pressure ready to go. I'll open the valve, ready to go into the engine. And then um, the other thing is injector latency time. So in the calibration, the dead time of the injector, which is the time that the signal's sent to the injector for it to open, the, the delay time in milliseconds that it takes for that to occur is different at different voltage, voltages for different injectors. Luckily, this is a good thing about injector dynamics, they actually provide the information for the latency times, the dead times, on their website. So I've just got to do that on the Cyvex before we start up. It'd probably, probably be all right, you know, it probably would run without it, but just get it in there so it's done then. Um, then we can fire it up, uh, have, a, have a look at what the, the fuel tables that I've written, do you know, have a, see, have a look, see what they look like when we get it up to temperature, you know, see what the corrections are and stuff. But yeah, it's, uh, it's an exciting day. It's been, uh, it's been a long time coming. I'll, we'll go over to the car and then we'll get this fitted, uh, get the... Before I get ahead of myself, get the coolant in the car. <laughs> oh, we're already open. Sorted. Right, so this is where the uh, this is where that goes. Simply on there. Hopefully, it'll clear the bonnet. <laughs> it's the moment of truth now. We'll soon find out. I'll just see if, uh, I didn't expect it to be that tall, it's quite tall. Let's see if it clears the bonnet. Please clear the bonnet. <laughs> Can we see in there? Does it clear the bonnet? Ah, oh, plenty of room, plenty of room. Yep, sound. I'll throw you back on the stand and then uh, get, this, get this nipped up. It's, uh, it's actually tighter than I uh, expected. We could probably r run it around a little bit like that, but I'll be able to get the cap off, so we'll just leave it. It is a little bit tight, but I think it's all right. We don't want it going underneath this cover because it might get mangled up with the uh, power steering, um, the, what's it called, auxiliary belt. So we'll leave it like that for now. If we uh, have any issues, we might have to uh, get, either get another line made up or something, I don't know. Um, Another uh, one of these extensions. So we've gone, as I said the other day, we've gone finger tight with this and then about another ten and a half, do you know, of the, of the flats, not a full ten and a half. Well, hats off to you if you can get a full ten and a half on one, but about ten and a half. Um, and then same with that one. There we 
Vinegar. Salt. So then this one, this one's just got, it's like a Cetrab uh, oil cooler um, adapter. I just need to move on the inside actually. It's got like a little, if I take that O-ring out, it's got like a little recessed groove going running all the way around for that O-ring to sit in. Um, that is going on top of, on, on there, onto the uh, killer bee. <laughs> so we'll get that in now. I'm just gonna put a bit of uh, WD-40 onto the O-ring so it doesn't pinch it up. I wish all the jobs were this easy. Nice, easy, straightforward jobs. There we go. All done, fill her up with coolant. Yeah, I just wanted to show you, this is Carl's little trailer of goodies. <laughs> He's got all, his, uh, all the bits that I'm putting on his car. New boot, carbon spoiler, similar to myself. As, uh, um, he's got, and he's made him one of my, the new version subframe without the two um, mounts. I'll, uh, I'll grab that. So yeah, he's got one of the uh, subframes. Only difference, Carl's had it powder coated. Looks mega that. Um, so I've got that to fit to Carl's. And also, he's got a nice big sheet of carbon fibre in here. Um, that's for, I need to make some end plates, some of the big end plates for the spoiler. And then look at this. I'm, je I'm slightly jealous of all this because, uh, well, who wouldn't be? It's uh, I know one, one. This is my, one of my next purchases, what uh, Andy's going to make for me. But look at that, absolutely mega, and mega light as well. Um, the important bit, you know, versus the, the stock item. Uh, but I'll go through this and show you when we're, when we're fitting it and what it looks before and after. But uh, obviously this is a rear, um, rear subframe, so yeah. Just a little side snippet on them, that was all. This is almost like deja vu, but... Uh, vacuum fill kit for the current system so that's what we're going to that's what we're going to do next this is not mine shout out to uh, my mate danny he's uh, he's lent me this he, on, on a long term basis actually <laughs> he wanted you know, i've had it uh, since obviously the last build build so to speak you know engine build um, so quite handy but I went through this last time so I won't go through it again let me get this on uh, we'll get the compressor on we'll pull a vacuum make sure I've got no leaks and then get the uh, get the water in it get the coolant in it so we've had this on for I don't know five or ten minutes now um, and we've not lost any pressure so we're just going to connect the hose to the other end and uh, get some antifreeze in there Easy peasy. Car's powered up, connected to the ECU. So on the gauges here, we've got uh, the multiplier for the closed loop, see what it's doing, you know, as far as corrections. Um, lambda one, what it's reading, engine oil pressure, and then fuel pressure. Anyway, what we wanted to do was to uh, paste car load the last iteration that I've just amended um, and it'll have the adjustments to the um, primary injector opening times so if we delta view it I've changed it here you know um, slightly not much but uh, it might need some amendment on that but we'll see when we get it started uh, so I just want to paste Carl Import map, yes. Okay. Device program, okay. And then now I just want to check the engine oil pressure. A 
A few moments later. seen from um, from the little snippet we're running uh, I'm over the moon yeah absolutely belting mega um, two little things I noticed everything was fine you know um, surprisingly ran pretty well um, considering you know I've not done any mapping so to speak uh, off the sort of base setup that I've done it seems to be uh, seems to be all right but uh, two things, the coolant tank, um, the bit that I welded that I didn't pressure check, it's, uh, it's leaking a little bit. So this one here, uh, you can just see around, around the weld. So it's a shame because I've crinkle coated in that, but I'm going to have to whip it off and then uh, re-address that. And then the other one is the one down the back of the block there, that blue fitting. Can we just see that? I actually tried chasing this uh, issue for, well, overnight, over a couple of nights actually, a couple of days, and um, it, it turned out that I'd tightened the M12 banjo fitting to the block, um, but I'd not tightened the AN, AN6 fitting to the banjo fitting. <laughs> so, yeah, simple fix, nipped it up, and it was fine. The uh, deck cam's on. You know, just to, 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 not listening for detonation really, just listening for, um, obviously I idle, it's not going to be having any issues like that, but uh, just listening for, just to, to the engine, like a stethoscope really. And uh, yeah, film mega. I've put the, the other thing, I've put uh, the through little connectors for the radiator fan, um, just them two there. And then I've got to take the intercooler off tomorrow and put the bottom two through, but Turn, I turn the radiator fan in the calibration down to come on at anything above 92 degrees and then go off when it goes below 88 degrees. So it was up at like 97 and 92. Um, so I've just brought it down a little bit. Um, just give it a little, a little helping hand. But yeah, I'm, uh, I don't need to go on anymore. It's, uh, I'm over the moon. Do you know, it's been, uh, it's been a long iteration, this, this part of the build. And... Yeah, mega, really uh, happy. The other th thing that I wanted to mention was the boost control solenoid pipe where I remember when I was going through it the other day, um, I plumbed it the wrong way around. So this 
is boost boost reference and then it goes to the bottom of the gate that was going into port number one and that's normally open when the solenoid's not energized so it was just it was just a permanent boost leak so we started that now that's fine yeah um i don't need to i don't need to say anymore well uh, i'll see you in the next video and we can start tuning mega see you in a bit you want to see it start for one time don't you <laughs>